device. It does not actively respond to the satellite. It merely needs reception. So you can use this in concert with a satellite telephone in such a way that you don't have your satellite phone on reporting your location all the time. And in fact, when someone wants to call you, you can have this on all of the time. And it will allow someone to send a message saying that they would like to call you. And then you can activate the phone and for a limited period of time, understand that your communications will be intercepted and your location will be disclosed. So if you're in Syria, for example, you can expect that location. If they are worth their weight, they will probably come after that location in not too long of a time. And in addition to the satellite's GPS issues, there are, of course, directional radio finding teams that are looking for people using RF devices. So something like this is very useful because it is very rare. That is, it does not actually report on you. It only receives. And if you go to the website, you can tell it which regions of the world you'd wish to have it activated for. So you can actually kind of fake out some people, in a sense, by having um, let's say the Syrian region activated and then somewhere in South America and then somewhere in Europe. And all three will receive your pages. And so this is useful, I think, and a very practical step. There's like, I think, 600,000 people in the world that have these pagers, though. So you've got to find this pager on eBay. It costs about $700. But it is one of the most useful tools I can imagine because it's an actual out-of-band communication system that does not disclose your private location. Um, so to that end, I know that I've taken up more time than I'm supposed to, <laughs> but uh, I did want to mention one last thing, which is that the trial of Bradley Manning is about to start in the United States, and the fate of Bradley Manning is my fate, and the fate of many people in this room, especially people that are not in this room, but some people in this room that I know. And that is to say that Julian Assange has been indicted, I believe, in secret, and it is a sealed indictment. And for those indictments, that namesake case I mentioned before, USA v. Applebaum, that is the prelude probably to my own sealed indictment. The investigation is about the Espionage Act, which carries the death penalty, which, as you can imagine, is sort of a shitty thing to be investigated for. So I would ask all of you, even though many of you do not like Julian Assange, I'm sure, or Bradley Manning, I would ask you to recognize that the big picture is one that will probably include myself and others and the freedoms of many people around the planet. So if Bradley Manning goes down and Julian Assange goes down, I can imagine many, many other people will. And in fact, the free press itself, I think, is on its way down when that occurs. So I'd really encourage you to speak out in support of Manning and Assange and other people like them. Thank you. annoyed the US authorities about you, and how intrusive has their surveillance been on you personally when you're traveling? Well, um, in, a, in 2010, I gave a talk for Julian Assange at Hackers on Planet Earth, and I very consciously knew that when doing this that I would be targeted. So I immediately started using Gmail and Twitter and other services, because I wanted to show everyone in this room and every other room like it that those services, regardless of how secure they are, are not secure against a state that claims the ability to monitor corporate communications or to intercept them or to get them after the fact. And I believe that all of my accounts have been subject to what are called an administrative 2703D order, which is um, uh, USC, uh, USC 182703D, which is essentially an administrative subpoena where the, the, the barrier is lower than a search warrant for the government being able to, to get metadata. And I've also learned, and I've actually never publicized this before, but I feel perfectly fine saying it, um, that each of the places that received a 2703D order, I believe they also received a national security letter, an exigent circumstance letter, and a sealed search warrant for the content of my communications in an ongoing prospective manner. I can't prove that last part, but I believe that this is true. And what I have also experienced includes um, more than a dozen physical detainments at American airports, uh, most of which were political in nature, including being interrogated about my views about the Iraq war by U.S. Army soldiers on U.S. So uh, soil with the Immigration Customs Enforcement. My partner, for example, woke up with two men with night vision goggles watching her in Seattle, where we live, uh, in her bedroom. Um, she sees these people, and when she calls the police, of course the Seattle police are either aware of it or complicit in some way, such that they would not even take a police report. And the theft of my property at those border searches, for example, has um, not continued, but I have never had my property returned. 
And if there are sealed search warrants that had been served on me, in theory, the legal framework in the United States is such that I would not be able to tell you in this room that such a thing had occurred, which, in my opinion, is a severe curtailment of my free speech. And just two weeks ago, while out at dinner, I believe that the surveillance of my life is so total that while out with my partner at a sushi restaurant where we had never gone uh, together before, we did not bring any telephones. We had planned it using off-the-record messaging over the Tor network, uh, chatting with each other. And um, she picked me up, we went for a drive, and, and we sort of detoured to this restaurant. And uh, in that process, um, I think we kind of threw the surveillance team for a loop. And uh, I say that because not long after we arrived at the restaurant, a fairly built man comes and sits down next to us um, and pulls out his iPhone and points the microphone at an angle so that, such that he's sitting here and I'm sitting here and points it directly at me. And uh, another person comes in not too long afterwards, and of course the restaurant has many empty seats. That's the worst table in the restaurant, I might add. Uh, and they stay there until after the restaurant is closed, and they're the only people that are there. And it's quite obvious that they have no reason to be there, and they're not talking to each other because they like each other. Supposedly they're on a first date, but they don't, they don't mention anything that you would hear on a first date. And if the story sounds familiar to you, um, it's probably because you have also been surveilled in this way. But this suggests that the surveillance of my life, which I do not notice, is so total and complete that uh, it is, uh, it's pretty awful. There is, as Hokobo Timmerman wrote in Prisoner Without a Name, Cell Without a Number, the loss of tenderness is something that uh, is most noticeable. It is impossible to feel free in a situation in which there is so much surveillance. And if it sounds paranoid, I would encourage you to look into the WikiLeaks investigations and the grand juries there in the United States, because it is so total and large that I cannot even name every single government agency that is involved in it. And it is quite quite a terrible thing, and you know, to that end I would say that it is quite impactful on my life. Thank you, Jake. Um, NASA. Thank you.